And it was kind of it was kind of the place of that time in Iowa for hunting. And I happened to buy land in or near there without realizing it. Yeah, I just bought the farm I liked, and it happened to be smack dab in the middle of all this. All right, here's a really cool video with Steve Hansen. Steve bought his first farm ever in his early 20s, 200 acres in Monroe County, Iowa, and ended up piecing almost 400 acres. And who ended up buying that? was Bill Winkie. And as you know, we've had the chance to talk with Bill earlier this March and have him tell his entire story. Here is the perspective of one of the sellers that helped piece together Bill's dream farm. And what's really cool is to hear how far recreational ground has come over the last 20 or so years. When Steve bought this farm, almost all of the timber was considered wasteland to the bank. So really cool conversation. We have the full length episode coming to this channel as well. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Here we go. As you piece that forward, so you had 427. 427. What year? That would have been, by the time of the second, it would have been the early 2000s by the time I owned the second farm. 2002, something like that. And you had a new neighbor. So, yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, he, he had been in the area a lot. It's a guy that everybody knows, Bill Winky. Um, that, that immediate area, the area between the town of Albion and Blakesburg, had a large farm that was owned by some well known hunters. Um, and that was where Bill lived. He was actually like the manager of the farm for a while. It was a, a corporation that owned, I'm going to say roughly 4,000 acres. There were some bigger named hunter guys that were members and it was kind of, it was kind of the place of that time in Iowa for hunting. And I happened to buy the land in or near there mm -hmm. without realizing it. Yeah. I just bought the farm I liked and it happened to be smack dab in the middle of all this. Uh -huh. So that's how that part uh, worked out there. So. That is pretty crazy because you just bought the place because you really like. Because I like the layout. Yep, yeah, I, like I didn't realize any other things about it. So. And then, so in that process, were you convinced like you're never going to sell that farm at yes. any point? Yep, absolutely. I was convinced of that. I had no intentions of ever selling it. I would never even consider that. That was my farm. The only goal was to expand. That was it. You know, there was no thought of, of expand the, as in just continue to piece together. Yes, that farm. add pieces to that farm. Uh -huh. Yep, yep. And I got to know all the neighbors, and you know, had hoped if something this guy decides to sell, I'll get the chance or mm -hmm. this or that. And you know, as um, yeah, but even still, then at that time, my situation of income hadn't changed a lot. So, but I was developing equity through the farm, so I I'd started to figure out that side of the game that. You know, my ability, even though my income hasn't changed, my ability to purchase has because what I have now is worth so much more. So substantially. Yeah. When so. you when you bought that first one at uh, eighty two thousand, how much did you have to put down on that? I want to say I put, put about. I want to say I put about twelve or thirteen thousand down. It wasn't a lot. It was yeah. like maybe eight fifteen percent something like that. Yeah. And it. It, it was not 20,000. I know that. It was less than 20, somewhere in that in that range. Mm -hmm. But the, the thing that I'll never forget about that is there were so many hurdles in my mind, and now today I deal with them daily on real estate deals, but one was the appraisal. You know, because at this point I realized if the, the guy had told me if the appraisal doesn't come back right, then you might have to come up with more money, which that was not good. <laughs> and <laughs> so... So I got the appraisal back and I was all excited because it appraised like they usually do right about the price you're paying for it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but the appraisal said at the bottom property, you know, it, it listed all the categories of land and it had a map. It had crop land, it had pasture land, and then all the timber was marked and it was called wasteland. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what is wasteland? You know, why yeah. am I buying wasteland? And, but in that, their mind, it, timber had zero value. They were assigning zero value to the wooded land. See, and what's so, crazy, did people, people used wood? That, oh, yeah, so like, and, the, and people did cut timber back yeah. then, so they must have, but I don't think the banks, because they couldn't put a number on it, I don't think they used it for their calculations, sure. you know. Which is, and it's still sort of that way. That's fair, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. know, they still don't want to, if you want to use timber in a, you know, evaluation of a farm, it takes quite a bit of documentation to get the banks to pay attention compared to, oh, this is a CRP contract or crop rent. There you guys have it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. My name is Jay Cole from a real estate broker out of the state of Illinois. And we have new videos like this every single Thursday and Saturday and new podcasts every single Monday. If you're looking to learn more about buying and selling land or just anything recreational land, you are in the right location. Hit the subscribe button. Till next time, see you.